Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to start paper two of the J Advanced test from 2021. It has 19 problems dealing with physics, and here's the first one. I must warn you, some of these are pretty strange type of problems, sometimes very challenging and virtually impossible to do in just the three minutes allotted per problem. So here's our first one. It's not too bad of a problem. It deals with statics, and here we read uh, one end of a horizontal uniform beam of weight W and length L is hinged on a vertical wall at point O, and its other end is supported by a light, inextensible rope. The other end of the rope is fixed at point Q at a height L above the hinge at point O. A block of weight alpha W is attached at point P of the beam, as shown in the figure, and the figure is not to scale. The rope can sustain a maximum tension of 2 times the square root of 2 times w. Which of the following statements is or are correct? And so they give us four statements, and any one of the four could be correct. So, which ones? I would say that the best thing to do is to immediately calculate the tension in the string. And since it's a statics problem, and we have the beam hinged at point O, we can use the sum of all the torques. So we use that principle where the sum of all the torques must add up to zero. And so how many torques do we have? Well, we have the weight of the beam pulling down this way, we have the weight of the object pulling this way, and we have the tension pulling this way. So the first one would be the weight of the beam. It's causing a clockwise rotation, which is a negative torque. So this is equal to negative the force, which is the weight of the beam, times the distance from the point of rotation to where the force is acting, which is L divided by two minus the weight of the object hanging from it, which is alpha w, times the distance from where it acts to the point of rotation, which is L, and then plus, because you can see that the tension will pull in the other direction, and one way to look at it is this way. We could say, well, if we draw a line this way, then this becomes what we call the distance three for the third force, the tension, so it would be plus the tension times d3. Now the question is, what is D3? And if you take a look at this right triangle right here, we see the opposite side to the right angle is the hypotenuse L. This here is D3, but notice if this is L and this is L, then we know that this is a 45 degree angle. So essentially, D3 is L times the cosine or the sine of 45 degrees. In this case, the sine, of course, of 45 degrees. And so this can be written as 0 equals minus W L over 2 minus alpha W L and then plus the tension times L times the square root of 2 over 2 because that's what the cosine of 45 degrees is equal to. And then right away you can see you can cancel all the L's because every term has an L in it so that disappears. And now we just have to solve that for the tension. Uh, maybe just to make things a little bit easier, let's multiply everything by 2. And so we get 0 is equal to minus w, minus 2 alpha w. And here that would be plus the square root of 2 times the tension. And so then we have the tension is equal to, when we move this across, we get w plus 2 alpha w divided by the square root of the 2. So there we go. There is the tension. And then, of course, if you want to kind of pull out a W, you can say that this is equal to W times 1 plus 2 alpha divided by the square root of 2, like this. Okay, so now that we have a value for the tension, let's see if we can answer some of these questions to see if they are correct or not, or at least check some of the answers to see if they're correct. So the first two deal with the vertical and horizontal component of the reaction force, at point O. So we know that the beam is going to be pushed into the wall. Hmm, some of my neighbors making some noise there. And that means there's going to be a horizontal reaction force, so it's called R in the X direction. And also notice that the weight of the beam is kept up by the wall, so there's going to be a vertical reaction force, R sub Y. And so the first one deals with the vertical component, which is R sub Y of the reaction force. and it says here that it does not depend on alpha. Well, let's see if that's true. What if we pick a, a point right here? What if we pick the pivot point right there? Let's call this pivot point uh, point B, for lack of anything else we could put there. All right, we'll just call it point B, 
And notice that if we put a pivot point there, there's only two forces acting relative to this pivot point that cause a torque, is the weight of the beam pushing the beam this way and the reaction force pushing back this way. So these are the only two forces, the reaction force and this. And so the reaction force in the vertical direction only depends on the weight of the beam if we put our pivot point there. So therefore, we can say that it does not depend on alpha. So A would be a correct statement. How about B? The horizontal component of the reaction force at zero is equal to W if alpha is 0.5. So now you can see that the force pushing the beam in there would be the horizontal component of T. So it would be this force right here. So this would be T in the X direction. And T in the X direction is equal to T times a cosine of 45 degrees. And so this would be equal to T times the square root of 2 over 2. All right. So uh, we can then say that R sub X must therefore equal T sub X. R sub X must equal T sub X. So now let's see what that would be equal to if we set alpha equal to 0.5. So here we have T, so R sub X, which is equal to T sub X, which is equal to T times the square root of 2 over 2. So notice if I multiply this times the square root of 2 over 2, I get this is equal to W times 1 plus 2 alpha divided by the square root of 2, multiply it times the square root of 2 over 2. So the square root of 2s cancel out, and now we have 1 plus 2 alpha over 2. Now let's substitute in there. So this is equal to W times 1 plus 2 times alpha, and alpha is 0 0.5, like this, divided by 2. So now we have um, the horizontal component of the reaction force at O is equal to W for alpha equals 0 0.5. So is this equal to 1? So 2 times 0 0.5 is 1 plus 1 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this is indeed W if I replace alpha by 0 0.5. And so therefore, that is also a correct statement. All right. Notice you only have three minutes to do this. You have to go quickly. So now the tension in the rope is 2W for alpha equals to 0 0.5. So now let's go back to this, or maybe this format right there. And so the tension when alpha is equal to uh, 0 0.5 is equal to, so here we have W times 1 plus 2 alpha, 1 plus 2 times 0 0.5 divided by the square root of 2, so it will be 2 divided by the square root of 2, 2 divided by the square root of 2W, and you can see that is not equal to 2W. So therefore, B, uh, C is not a correct answer. And finally, they tell us the rope breaks if alpha is greater than 1.5, and we know that there's a maximum tension right here. Notice the maximum tension is equal to this. So now, let's replace alpha by 1.5 and see if that's the threshold at which the rope would break. That would give us that value. So then finally, we go tension as alpha is equal to 1.5 is equal to W times 1 plus 2 times 1.5 divided by the square root of 2. And so this is equal to W times, that's 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 divided by the square root of 2. But that's not quite 2 times the square root of 2, or maybe if we multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 2 over 2, essentially rationalize the denominator. So this becomes equal to 4 times the square root of 2 over 2. So this is equal to W times, oh, I forgot the W, there we go. And so W is equal to, uh, this is equal to 2 times the square root of 2 times W, and notice that is the limit at which the rope will break. So when we plug in alpha equals 1.5, we do reach the limit at which the rope will break. Anything bigger than that, the rope will not be able to withstand. So therefore, answer D is also correct. And so I'm sure it took way more than three minutes to do that. You'd be hard pressed to get this done in three minutes because you do kind of have to work through the problem. You have to work very quickly and hopefully you can get the right answer this way. That is how it's done. <laughs> how many? Almost 10 minutes. Almost 10 minutes. Of course, I read the problem aloud. I did some talking. But yes, I, I'd say three minutes is really, really 
tight for a problem like this.